Well, I just want to talk a little bit about today, uh, our, our journey uh, all started in agriculture on this whole autonomous. Um, Chris, sorry. Yeah, Chris. You want to move, you want to change into presentation mode? Uh, let's see. How do I get to presentation? Big screen on the bottom. Down to the bottom, to the right. To the right. Uh, next, next one. Next one. Next one. Yep. Go to the to right. right. To the right. Right there. Yeah. Right there. Okay. Thank you. Nope. That's. Oh. Still not. That do it? No. Uh, you, well, that might have to do. Otherwise, you're going to be trying to right. switch around changing screens. Yeah, just go, just ahead. go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. So um, our, our journey, this whole autonomous journey, AI, vision, uh, all, all started in agriculture. And uh, originally, it was uh, Moog is a $3 billion company, uh, primarily focused on uh, defense and aerospace and heavy industrial markets. And uh, this journey all started with a small group of about five people uh, focused, on, focused on agriculture. And we develop you know, various subsystems. Uh, and it, it's not just the vision system, but it's the mechatronics, it's the perception, it's the safety, it's the data analytics, it's all these things that you have to do in order to make a, a whole system come together. And as I mentioned before, uh, we, we started in agriculture. And the reason we started there is really because it was dull, dirty, and dangerous. Uh, there are less stringent uh, safety requirements, uh, limited speeds, uh, less vehicle interaction. So just a, a lot easier place to start rather than, than compared to being on the highway. Uh, relatively defined environments. Uh, we're not worried about um, uh, you know, a bicycle running through the orchard. Um, compared to other markets, uh, lots of things going on, very congested. Um, nice thing we liked about agriculture was things were planted in rows, which made life a little easier. Um, places we thought we could add potential high value uh, to growers, increasing the overall yield. Um, it's an extremely competitive uh, cost environment, which is a good place to start. Uh, it really forced us as a company to figure out how to develop uh, this technology, these sensors at prices that ultimately someone could afford. Uh, we certainly, uh, certainly have enjoyed a, a diverse base of users and no shortage of opinions, which has really helped us, I think, focus, focus a lot of our efforts. And at the time we started, there were really very few uh, companies in this area it, it enabled to, to build people to have the ability to scale. So we, we started our journey in agriculture. And originally we started it in uh, the almond orchards of California developing autonomous uh, vehicles to collect data. Uh, we, we spent some time on targeted spraying. There you can see in the middle uh, with the ability to target individual flower clusters, some efforts on weed spraying, and finally some efforts on, on data collection. And we got quite, quite far along and uh, we, as we struggled to, to make a business case out of this, we honestly uh, kind of stumbled into uh, a whole construction market, which I think ultimately will pay lots of dividends for agriculture in the end. Uh, but we've now gone from a group of five people to a group of nearly 150 people. Um, we've opened a brand new plant. Uh, we have, we have uh, orders for 500 various different types of construction vehicles that use a lot of the technology that we developed in the apple orchards. A lot of the vision systems, very similar to what some of the other folks have shown. Uh, and we've been able to, to apply these to uh, lots of different construction environments. The one that's probably very interesting and very close to the apple orchard was some of the work we've been doing in uh, autonomous solar farms. These are places where you're building panels in rows 
not too much different than apple trees in rows. And again, it's, it's, it's really all the same technology. It's just how do you apply it to these different markets? And as you can imagine, it's just, it's rapidly changing. And what yesterday's sensor is no longer a good enough sensor. Things are constantly changing, constantly moving. And we're challenged with as we, as we make our first uh, 500 or so vehicles uh, that you can see up there in the screen, uh, trying to keep pace with that. And to add insult to injury, uh, on our construction side of our business, we're scaling up to make a thousand vehicles next year. And along with that comes all the supply chain problems you can imagine, all the people problems, but it's really interesting. It's a very dynamic environment. It's, it's it really cutting edge and changing. We've, we've also um, just recently received an order for 50 autonomous helicopters. Uh, these are helicopters uh, that are used in agriculture primarily for crop spraying. And uh, you no longer need a pilot. And uh, you can fly over fields, orchards, whatever, and uh, do, do crop spraying. And uh, it'll come home to rest and, and, it's, and it's done. So you take all the risk, uh, you know, from having to have a pilot in the seat. So as we started in agriculture, uh, we really, um, have been developed a set of tools. And this set of tools has now carried us into a bunch of construction applications, or excuse me, military applications. You can see down there at the bottom, it's not your typical uh, uh, you know, Bobcat you know, case uh, skid steer. It happens to be a skid steer with a, a missile pod on the side. Uh, these are machines that are being developed for uh, uh, low tech ways to bring high uh, tech ammunitions to the battlefield. Uh, the vehicle on the right is an autonomous vehicle, uses all the same kinds of vision systems uh, for, for tracking the bad guys. So uh, all this technology has, has all been spun off from our early efforts in the, uh, in the apple orchards. So say we started this in 2017, uh, we stood up a business, in 2021, uh, that business has now spawned another business in the aviation sector. We're currently uh, chasing a number of military programs and we hope that we'll be able to take a lot of our lessons learned and apply those back into agriculture. But at this point in time, we will have a bunch of common platforms that the whole industry has struggled with uh, to be able to have at their dispersal. At the very beginning, when we started this, as Paul said, we were you know, using hardware that's off the shelf. We now find ourselves in the position of being able to, because of our quantity requirements, to be able to develop a more specific, purposeful, useful hardware. Uh, the cost is coming down. And so I believe in, as we move forward in the future, it's going to be easier and easier to adapt these kinds of systems to agriculture. And this is really what the whole industry has really been lacking. And it's, it's, it's partly the timing. It's, it's really the push for uh, uh, electrification, uh, autonomy, uh, labor issues. Uh, so I, I really think it's very bright. I really think in, in the next few years, you're going to continue to see more and more of this hardware uh, make it into agriculture related applications. And it's all started there. And I believe it'll probably ultimately end there as uh, these other businesses generate the revenue and the technology that will then allow us to apply it uh, to other places like agriculture. So that's a, that's a real quick, quick view of, of where we've been. Uh, it's not where we thought we were going to end up when we first started. Uh, it's taken some, many twists and turns, but it's, it's been very exciting. And this, this technology uh, is, is here to stay. And I think it's a lot closer than, than people think. 
it's really a matter of finding the right kinds of applications and, and the technology as the price comes down will enable more and more uh, applications to be applicable. That's all I got. Thank you, Chris. So if you could stop sharing and uh, any questions for Chris? Okay, here's one from Rod. Are you still working on communications of data to employees, et cetera? Yes. We, we originally had started in the apple orchard trying to prevent, try to provide information to laborers. So when they stood in front of a particular tree, um, based on the data that we had collected, we would be able to tell a laborer um, what's on that tree and we would leave it up to the laborer to figure out ultimately what has to be done. So that was something that was, was very practical. We've taken that technology, taken it a, a step further, have num number of applications on the construction side uh, that we're applying that to. Uh, and I expect that, you know, given a few more years, uh, we'll eventually move to more sophisticated systems besides just, uh, you know, giving verbal information to a laborer, actually providing him with uh, uh, glasses or a headset for his ability to actually uh, tell him what to go do instead of him trying to figure some of that out by himself. So that, that technology is, is, uh, is finding its way into some construction related activities, certainly on the military side. And that ultimately will all flow down as that, that gets better and better over time.